So what I think the main thing people can learn from this uh, art form happens to be uh, that we can take inspiration out of degradation or take degradation to inspiration, especially with this type of art. People see me, you know, right off the bat and they say, oh, you do cool graffiti. And then they see me do it. They're like, oh my gosh, how did you do that? I feel very successful for being able to accomplish my uh, Bachelor of Science degree in biology and I minored in geology. I feel successful in the fact that I've been able to um, raise a house and home with my wife and my daughter and my dog. Um, that's, that's probably the biggest one for me. Um, I really enjoy the fact that I was able to uh, um, be with them. They were able to travel with me through my success. You know, being a, a artist that's known in San Antonio, being an educator, being educated all at the same time. I feel like um, having my family as a mainstay throughout all those different successes. I think, as far as my art form goes, there's a not very many venues that are receptive to this type of art form. Um, there's a large stigma that people place on people that use spray cans. And uh, if I show up in a suit and tie and I tell them that I do spray can art, uh, they either believe me or think I'm um, being really, really facetious. But for the most part, um, the city governments that have tourism spots for me to be able to show my artwork don't really have the avenues set up within their legislature and in their laws and in their permitting to really allow a business or a, a art community like mine to sort of flourish within um, their, I guess, their normal scheme of things. Especially here in San Antonio, um, there's a lot of doors that have been shut. But I continue to try my best to stay legitimate in my practices as far as, um, you know, doing it where I do it with full-on permission and permitting that's required. Um, the techniques I use are a mixture of um, web manipulations, blocking techniques, optical fade-ins, and um, um, marbleizing techniques. So, so when I paint a painting, I'm usually going from inside out or from furthest back to forward, um, background to foreground. Uh, for the most part, I paint the painting from top to bottom, furthest back to front, and that's just the nature of the paint. I have 10 minutes or less to paint and I got a couple of minutes of wiggle room and if I if I work it right as it evaporates it continues to maintain its layer so I, I'm able to layer colors on top of one another and you'll see when I put down the paper and I can peel up some colors not all of them come up because of that adherence to the paper is only that single layer I rely on that to give me um, depth I rely on that to give me the sense of detail I also rely on the fact that um, the eye plays tricks and wants to see three dimensions. And so with a simple line or a simple um, black into blue fade at the base of a, of a mountain or a planet, for instance, you get this um, sense of pop. And so um, to use a razor blade, um, it's part of the one of the wet manipulations where I wet the paint again with a clear coat. Then I'll manipulate the paint on. But um, that's where I get definite shapes like boats or birds or trees and such. So um, I also use them for like um, highlights off of mountains and things like that. But I don't know if I can list all the different types of techniques that I have, but when I'm painting them, or if I have an idea, they're almost second nature to me. It's the main purpose, attention. You know, people aren't watching me paint and then all of a sudden there's fire, so they come and look. Number two, it actually facilitates the drying or the evaporation of the toluene propellant from between the polymer layers. So I really need that sometimes when I need to put a block down that's actually touching the paint, and I need it not to come up with that block. Almost 14 years. Doesn't feel like it. When I'm down there, it doesn't feel like it. When I'm working on it, you know, people are, are really enjoying the situation and I get to share with them the fact that this is all because of Jesus. It doesn't feel like that. When I'm packing up at the end of the night, it feels like 14 years. Because I got this down to a little bit of a science where I put everything where it goes, where it needs to go. And then I feel my back set in, I feel my knees set in, and my arms set in. All these different things like start to hurt. And I'm like, wow, I'm not 16 anymore. Oh yeah, 
I'm not 20 anymore, you know, 29 now and I'll be 30 this year, but I don't feel like that. I still have this youngness in my heart that I think I can continue to foster. And, um, I think uh, exhibit with this type of art. Don't give up. There's going to be a lot of obstacles in your way. Some people are not going to dig what you do, and it's okay. But don't give up. Continue to be pleasing to God, and as long as you do that, stay in right alignment, you'll be blessed and you'll be able to continue. And life is art. Imagine a world without art. There'd be no creativity, there'd be no imagination, and there'd be no feeling.